I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so earlier this year I tried my best to push the limits and see how low we could go with Windows 11 on the AMD side of things. Now it's Intel's turn. Here we have this computer that I, um, it was originally a refurbished computer that I never did sell. Um, I refurbished it back in 2014. Um, recently I pulled this out of my shed, pulled the power supply unit out. Had to make a repair to it and replace the capacitors in it. But I figured since we have a good candidate on the Intel side of things, let's give this a try. So it has an Intel Pentium 4 3.2 GHz CPU. It originally had a Celeron D356, which was most likely based off of Cedar Mill. I've heard that Cedar Mill is the lowest you can go with Windows 11. We're going to try the Prescott and see what happens. I think that's what's in here is a Prescott Pentium 4. If it doesn't work with the Prescott Pentium 4, then I can switch it out for a Celeron D Cedar Mill. I don't have any Pentium 4s based off of, based off of Cedar Mill to my knowledge. But before we start installing Windows 11, let me show you a little something else. It's going to start this thing up. I love that old compact logo. Windows Vista Home Premium is installed on this thing. And I think we do have the original hard disk drive in here. Listen to that hard drive go. <laughs> Listen to it scream. That's the Hitachi Destro hard drive in there, by the way. IDE hard drive. The thing about Windows Vista is it took a while to get things going off the hard drive, but uh, at least on this computer, once everything was loaded up, um, as you'll see, things are relatively, well, snappy. Well, So we have a Pentium 4 3.2 GHz processor in here, 2 gigs of RAM. ATI Radeon Express Graphics 200 chipset graphics. So yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty limited there. And again, the hard drive, which I believe is the original 80 gigabyte hard drive. Yes, 80 gigabyte. So I believe it's the, if it's not the original one, it's one very similar to it. So yes, uh, Windows Vista Home Premium. The thing about Vista Home Premium is it takes a while to get going, but once it's up, I mean, things load pretty, things actually work pretty well. And I tell you, there's this, 
Windows Vista has a has a piece of my, has a place in my history of uh, working on computers. Uh, Windows XP and Windows Vista. XP, excuse me, Vista was kind of that in between uh, of XP and Windows Seven. Of course, when Windows Seven came out, um, it was the way Vista should have been to an extent. Windows Vista was the final operating system for Microsoft that was what I'll consider fully featured right out of the package. Um, it had all of the stuff built in, like the photo viewer, or excuse me, the uh, photo gallery. Like for example, I know it's supposed to be Windows 11, but we'll give you a quick little tour of Vista. So yeah, photo gallery, movie maker, I mean, all of that stuff was baked right in to the OS. You didn't have to go on down, you didn't have to go online and download the Windows Live Essentials package because it was all there. And look here. Windows Media Center. I don't know if I've ever launched this on here. Media Center would take a little bit to load up, but the last time this computer really ran, um, I want to say it was 2014. Oh yes, look at that, guys. The Windows Vista Media Center. I tell you what, I really, really miss Windows Media Center. It was, it was, it was amazing. Of course, nowadays, I mean, nowadays we're streaming more, but. To be honest, I, I think Windows Media Center could have, it, if Microsoft would have continued to support this product, I think it would still be relevant today, um, because it it would be a nice like front end for YouTube on TV, um, Netflix, and all that good stuff. Matter of fact, I was running Netflix on Windows Media Center back in the day. Windows Windows Seven Media Center. There was an add-on you could install to run Netflix within Windows Media Center. It was pretty dang cool. Yeah, guys, um, Windows Vista. That being said, got Windows 11 on the flash drive. We're going to install Windows 11. So I'm going to try to boot off the flash drive and install it that way. And what do you know, this old BIOS appears to be able to detect flash drives. I wish I was always that lucky. Okay, let's see if Windows 11 step will load up on this. Oh, we get a hard reset. Give it one more shot. While it's doing that, I'm going to start looking for my Celeron D CPUs. So I may not have the original Celeron D356 processor for this machine, but I'll, I'll have to take a look and see if I can find it. Yep, just a hard reset. Shut it off, and we're going to change out the CPU. Okay, guys, we got lucky today. We found the Sauron D356. I've actually got a bunch of Sauron D352s, but we actually was able to locate a 356, and it might actually be the processor out of this machine. Oh, look at that. Got a copper core in this, uh... Cooler. That's pretty nice. Okay, so I have to get that cleaned up and... Also clean up the, uh, CPU. The nice thing about the old GA CPUs is uh, you don't have to have them in a really um, special container. Well, you probably should, but I just 
For example, all the Intel chips I have, or at least the LG A775, except for the really nice ones. Like, I think I've got a couple of Core 2 quads kicking around. Um, like, these old Pentium 4s and Sauron Ds, I just have them in a freaking bag, any static bag, loose. If you, if you dare did that with an AMD CPU, at least the older one with the um, PGA, well, you'd have some bent pins and some broken pins. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull out this penny of 4 3.2 gigahertz, which uh, this, <laughs> this processor may end up being a victim of a cooking with Intel episode in the future. Probably using this motherboard. Because this motherboard is definitely dated. Okay, it's going to drop in our Celeron D 356. So I'm going to clean up the heatsink fan and we'll do that real quick off camera. And apply some thermal compound to it. Okay, for this one, I'm going to actually do the big blob in a center method for the thermal paste. Plug in our fan. Okay, now we have the Sauron D356 processor installed. Now let's go ahead and try this again. Okay, now we have, of course, the Sauron D356 installed. Let's give it a try. Okay guys, we have liftoff. We're actually in setup with this processor. So yes, the uh, Prescott is definitely not compatible with Windows 11. So let's go ahead and run through setup. Okay, we're going to select, I don't have a product key. We're going to choose Windows 11 Pro. <laughs> Doesn't meet the middle system requirements. Hmm, okay. Okay, so we're back in Windows. Um, let's try to run setup from the flash drive. Now, I should mention this particular flash drive was set up using Rufus with the TPM and uh, the, the TPM secure bit checks bypassed. So, that's the first time I've ever gotten. Oh, we're going to have 64 bit Windows on here to start that. So, I do have one more idea in mind. Because I think the hard drive in this machine might be failing. I'm going to grab a solid state drive, hook it up to the Plexi, start Windows 11 installation to get Windows 11 onto the drive, and then swap it over into this machine and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Plexi and 
attempt to install Windows 11 on a 64 gigabyte solid state drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the first part of setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through Windows 11 installation to the point where it begins, where it goes to restart, and I'm going to shut the system off, retrieve the imaged SSD, and pop it into the system, and then see how that goes. Okay, let's give this a shot. Say I don't have a product key. Let's select Windows 11 Pro. Accept license terms. Choose custom. We'll select this drive right here and actually I think what's going to happen is, let's see here, yep, I'm going to have to actually disconnect all the other drives in the system. Okay, so I'm going to select new and apply. Alright, I'm going to actually have to restart the computer it looks like, or restart setup all together. Okay, let's try this again. That's the pop-up we've been looking for because it's, it needs somewhere to create the uh, uh, the uh, system reserve partition, which is responsible for getting the system or getting Windows booted. Okay, so we're going to select next and let it do its thing. That's why I always stress: don't just click next on the uh, on the partition wizard of Windows or the uh, Windows installer because sometimes it will either not create the uh, needed recovery partition or it will put it on a different physical disk. In the case of the uh, Plexi, um, originally the other hard drives were being seen, which one, actually, one or two of them already had that system reserve partition. And the thing is, the Windows installer, for some dumb reason, just assumes that it will just use an existing system reserve partition and just not create one on the drive you're installing to. So, we'll let this run, and when it restarts, I'll shut the system off, disconnect the SSD, pop it into this system, and we'll start it up. Okay, it's going to shut down the uh, Plexi. And go ahead and pull this SSD off and we'll hook it up to the subject computer we're testing here. So I've already got everything lined up and ready to go. Just plug this in. I'm going to set the uh, SSD down inside the system. I mean, it's, it's plastic. So, yeah, it's just temporary. But what's nice is now we're not going to have that old ID hard disk drive as a bottleneck. We're going to be running on an SSD. So, this can really, <laughs> really test the performance of this old thing running Windows 11. So, um, the Celeron D356 is not exactly the lowest you can go with Intel. I think. I mean, there are some lower end Celeron Ds like the 352, which I could have installed one of those, but I figured, what the heck, let's install a 356 since that's what this computer had originally. That being said, let's go ahead and start it up.
And there we are, Windows 11. First boot up on this system. So we've learned that Rufus does not remove some of the hardened requirements from the installer. I think the reason why it would not install is because this system technically is a single core processor. The Celeron D is a single core. Um, the Pentium 4 HD, however, is a dual is not a dual core, but it's a two thread. And it seems like the installer will count a two thread CPU as a dual core because I've installed Windows 11 on a netbook in the past, an Intel Atom N450, which is a single core processor but with two logical CPUs, two threads. So it looks like Windows 11 absolutely will not install on anything that is a single core, single thread processor. And you can see we're actually <laughs> we're actually kind of blazing right through this setup here. You can see the little dots are freezing up from time to time because, well, our CPU is not very powerful and we don't have a whole bunch of RAM either. This is DDR400 RAM, by the way. And it comes to show just how much of a bottleneck the hard disk drive really is, even on older stuff. I mean... This computer is from the times before SSDs were really even a thing. So, it comes to show that, I mean, unless you're working with something like a, like a netbook, you would be better off installing a solid state drive in pretty much anything that has a SATA connection. So I'm going to let this run through and then we'll continue from there. Okay, it's going to run through the uh, setup, and I do believe we're missing a graphics driver. I'll have a try out a patch driver, see if we can get the graphics to install on here. Uh-oh, we got the spilled ice cream again. Let's give this a try. Actually, I'm going to hit skip. I don't have internet. Nice. Actually, I don't want to set a Microsoft account. Okay, so I've given this thing some time to get everything loaded up, and I can say, uh, <laughs> it definitely took a while to get things set up on this thing. I mean, 
it took a long time. Now, I do believe we're still missing drivers for like the graphics. Trying to get a right click menu here on the start button. There we are. So I can I can definitely say the uh, the Sauron D. <laughs> you can see it's just horribly slow. We have just 512k of L2 cache, one core to work with, and that is it. I mean, the Sauron D was even slow on Windows 7. So we know it's going to be painfully slow on Windows 11. Now, I'm not sure if you paid attention earlier while I was running Windows Vista on this thing. Now, the uh, the copy of Windows Vista was actually 32-bit, but we were definitely using less RAM sitting at idle in Windows Vista. I think Vista was using like, what, 25, 30% of the 2 gigs of installed memory? But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just painfully slow and of course we have the Microsoft basic display adapter instead of the ATI Radeon Express so I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the uh, network and that way you can start downloading drivers and updates and I know that's going to make it probably painfully slow while it's doing it okay provided it even has a network driver yeah it does there we are so, the CPU activity is just, it's just constantly pegged at 100%, wide open. And it's going to start downloading stuff off the internet. In a moment, it's going to update the uh, clock. There it went, and of course it updated to Pacific time because Microsoft assumes that all computers are in the state of California or the state of Washington or the state of Oregon where it's Pacific time. So ever since Windows 8, apparently Microsoft assumes that there's no there's no important need to ask for your actual time zone. Man, why 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 would we ask about that? I mean why is that important? I mean your advertising ID, your Cortana settings in Windows 10, of course that's more important than your um what time zone you're in. I mean, Microsoft definitely got their priority straight there for sure. Trying to get into settings here. And you can see it is just painfully slow. Definitely not something I would suggest you run when it's 11 on, but we're just doing it for the heck of it. Here's fix the time. To remember, to remember what I was doing. It's crazy. The computer is so slow you forget why you click something. Gotta correct this. Okay, that's more like it. And you can see the course without the correct graphics installed, everything is just it looks very Windows XP ish right now. Heck, we can't even see a graph here because it's pegged at 100%. I mean, it is just max out. Costs 100%. CPU is such a bottleneck. That SSD, it could about freaking take a nap. Waiting on this CPU to respond. I mean, look at it. Hardly any disk activity. It's just all CPU. Heck, even the RAM's not heavily used. 
It's all CPU. Wide open, 100%, maxed out. I mean, for the past minute, the graph has shown 100%. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to attempt to try these drivers here that I have. Not sure if these are for 32 or 64 bit. We'll just try them. Ah, it picked up a driver. So let's see if the Radeon Express 200 graphics will work with Windows 11. And take a little bit of stress off the CPU. Okay, we have a graphics driver now. Let's see if the transparency works. All right, let's go ahead and uh, go back into settings. Oh, it looks like it's also installing some other drivers too. It's probably picking us up off the internet. Not sure if you can tell or not, but we now have, or could this be device manager simply updating? I don't know. Well, we do have the Radon Express 200 series chipset graphics now. You can see we have the rounded corners that Windows 11 has and some people absolutely hate and I guess I can't blame them. <laughs> yeah guys it's just super super slow. I mean this thing can about put you to sleep waiting on the load stuff. <laughs> And we can't blame it on a hard drive with this one because, hey, we got an SSD installed. Hot dang, come on. Oh, you need to activate one of those free and personalize your PC. Oh, screw you. Yeah, this one, this machine did not have a, uh, this particular machine did not have an existing Windows license, or at least for Windows 10, or Windows 8, or Windows 11, so there is no, there is no license. So really, um, there's not much more really to show, in my, in my opinion. I can do it. I can actually. I will do a restart and let this thing load up. You can see it's just it's just painfully slow, but it is running. There is one thing we need to do before we end this video. We need to install the Microsoft PC Health Check. That way. We can look at all the things that are crossed out or have a have a red X or a caution sign considering how this machine does not might does not meet the Microsoft Elite class minimum requirements to run Windows 11. 
And to be honest, this machine rightfully should not be running Windows 11. It is just so painfully slow. I mean, it is just painfully slow. The CPU is it, it's it. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. This just bad. I mean, that processor is just pegged at 100%. You don't see a graph because it's up here all the time. It's up at the top all the time. That's pretty bad. That is just. That's just really, really bad. The Sauron D, that was a. I've never, I never really liked those CPUs. They're, they're, they're horrible in my opinion. I mean, the one good thing they had for them at the time was, I mean, they had the 65 nanometer process, which has 65. I mean, it, today, of course, that's like ancient, but back then, I mean, going from the Pentium 4 to that, it was, well, you think about it. I mean, the Celeron D. The cache, the L2 cache is equivalent to a Pentium 4 Northwood. But, I mean, I d I've just never liked the Cell Run D processors. They're, they're, they're horrible. They're just horrible. And, from what I heard, they were actually pretty much overpriced back in the day. My grandpa, back in 2006, bought an e machines, cheap e machines, low end e machine system. With the Celeron D352, 256 megabytes of memory, with 128 megabytes being used for the graphics. So, Windows XP had just 128 megabytes, and in 2006, that was pretty pathetic. The very first thing I did to the thing was I took some RAM out of the old e machine system that the uh, 250 watt Best Tech 12E supply fried and use that RAM to upgrade the new computer to give it some more memory because the new computer also had DDR RAM. Anyways, go down here to my uh, folder that has the PC health check. Okay, let's go and run this. There's you know, something I didn't even get a UAC prompt there. And I have not turned off UAC on this one. Is the machine running so pathetic that UAC isn't even working? That's user account control. I'm telling you guys, this machine's making me sleepy. Of course, it is late, but. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and run the PC Health Check and see how this computer that's barely running Windows 11 does not meet the Microsoft Elite Class minimum system requirements to run Windows 11. Okay, after a brief little nap, we're in. No, I didn't actually take a nap, but I figured just <laughs> for the heck of it, I'd say it. But um, here we are in the PC Hell Check, and look, it says, it says this computer is 16 years old, which is about right because this computer is in fact from 2006. Got two gigs of RAM. The computer originally had just 512 megabytes, so a quarter of the amount that we have here was original to the machine. Um, of course, the whole, the, all the modules were replaced with two one gigabyte sticks. But anyways. Let's go ahead and check now to see if this PC meets the Microsoft Elite Class system requirements. <laughs> oh, the PC must support Secure Boot. TPM 2.0 must be supported and enabled. The processor isn't currently supported for Windows 11. There must be at least 4 gigabytes of system memory. The processor needs to have two or more cores. <laughs> so we only get a check mark for one thing. <laughs> the system disk. 
is the only thing that meets the requirements here. Everything else does not pass. I mean, lots of red X's and caution marks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we've learned that um, Windows 11 setup will indeed not install, even if you run the Rufus uh, mod on systems that uh, do not have two logical CPU threads or two physical cores. Yeah, um, it will actually install um, on computers with less than 4 gigs of RAM, but apparently the uh, the processor cores count is a hard requirement even in the installer so yeah <laughs> another way we could have installed this by the way would have been to copy out the Windows 11 install out win and, and, and paste it into a Windows 10 uh, installer I did this in a video when I test ran Windows 11 on the Plexi a while back and if I remember to do so, I'll put a link right up here. So yeah, guys, uh, Windows 11 on this 2006 Presario system. The only thing being changed, well, it's all state drive, but I mean, this thing is just so dang slow with that Sauron D356 that, heck, the hard drive, it would have you wouldn't have really noticed the difference at all because the SSD was just sitting there I mean, we can go back real quick and look in Task Manager, and you can just see for yourself. The CPU is still pegged at 100%. The SSD is just like, what am I here for? What am I here for? Give me something to do. <laughs> the Celeron D, uh, yeah, the Celeron D356 is just an underperforming piece of garbage. I mean. Heck, it was even slow on Windows XP. So, to be honest, I mean, this computer was originally, in 2006, a budget model. Because, I mean, it had the Celeron D processor and just 5, 12 megs of RAM. Uh, when computers run at time, had typically 1 gig or 2 gigs of RAM sometimes. Yeah, sometimes 2 gigs. I mean, it was deemed as Windows Vista capable. I mean, heck, it would run Vista a whole lot better than it would run this. But, yeah. There was a reason. There was a reason why I had that Pentium 4 CPU in this thing. Because the Celeron D is just so horribly performing. This is one of the videos where I'm just like, I'm so glad for it to be over with. But, I wanted to do it. I, I wanted to try out Windows 11 on the lowest of the low for Intel. And this is just about it. I mean, there are some slightly lower spec Celeron D processors in the uh, LGA 775 package with the Cedar Mill Core, but I think the 356 performance really sums up pretty well. So anyways, oh yeah, let's go ahead and do a restart, and then we'll finally get to end this video. Okay everybody, so now I got my phone here, we're going to use it as a stopwatch. You can see, oh there's one little dip right there in the CPU activity, but other than that it's still pegged down 100% wide open. So. Let's go ahead and restart this thing. It's probably, I won't be surprised if one of those updates run in the background. So, I'm going to try to restart this thing. Hopefully, one of those updates will not get in the way. I mean, this thing is so slow, it's actually, the dang mouse cursor is even hanging up. It's, it, it's just crazy. Okay, I went and disconnected the uh, network I'm going to try to restart this thing any day now I guess there are other I mean oh man look the RAM actually pegged out for a second right there that's why this thing's getting slow. And now the SSD activity spiked up a bit because we're having to do uh, VRAM. Lots of VRAM. Oh my gosh.
This thing is just so, so slow. So if you look carefully here, you can see that the disk activity indicator, it flickers just a little bit on occasion. The SSD is getting very bored. It's like, give me something to do. Alright, guys, you know what? I've had enough of this. Alright. Alright, I got the timer set. And the fact that I hard shut this thing down likely will not help. Well, <laughs> I can't say the first part was actually pretty fast, but let's not get our hopes up for a fast boot up. And I don't, I don't consider it done until the taskbar is loaded. And that's something that seems to take a while in Windows 11. Is the taskbar. I did not have the stopwatch going for the Windows Vista boot up, and that's one of the reasons why I did not speed that portion of the video up. That way, um, that way y'all can see for yourself, you can time it out yourself if you like the uh, Vista startup time and compare it with this. I guarantee you the Windows 11 will be much slower. Alright, we're still waiting on the taskbar. I'll stop the uh, timer when the, when the uh, taskbar icons load. Alright, I'm going to say that's 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Although I have stopped the, uh, the timer, I mean, you can see that, well, things are still horribly slow. I mean, it is just terribly slow. Okay, we finally got our start menu. So... Do I recommend you install Windows 11 on the uh, Sauron D356? Well, for one thing, you gotta either repl you gotta either use the hack installation method of uh, copying over an installed up WIM to a Windows 10 installation, or like I did, um, starting up the installation on a computer that will run it, and then copying over the drive to the destination computer. But again, would I recommend that you install Windows 11 on a Celeron D356? No. No, just don't. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even use I can recommend you install Windows XP on a Celeron D356. Honestly, guys, I'm, I'm considering doing a cooking with Intel with this CPU because I am really, really not happy with it right now. It's just, it's just so underperforming it's just so flipping slow so that might be a, that might that this might be a video idea coming up I may do a cooking with Intel with this thing and heck I may even have it running Windows 11 when I do it just for the heck of it because we know that CPU will be pegged out for sure so that being said this is how you shut off that computer running Windows 11 on the Sauron D356. That's the only way I can shut it down quickly. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.
Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to Kukun channel, and be sure to tick the bell that way you get notified of new video posts. Also, I recommend following Kukun Company on Facebook. A link is in the video description. In addition to computer tech videos, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX. Links are available at the end of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching and your support.